Hey friends, today we're talking about five things that I wish I knew when I started out my career as a project manager. For those of you who are new, my name is Alvin and I am actually a self-taught project manager. I went to the University of California, San Diego to study engineering and then I actually took a role as an engineer right out of college. After I worked in industry as a senior engineer, I took the leap and I took the initiative to find opportunities as a project manager. And fast forward many years later, I've worked in industry for over 10 years and I currently work as a manager of project management. So in this video, I want to set you up for success so you level set your expectations and don't get surprised all of a sudden because there were quite a few things that I didn't know about when I entered this field as an engineering project manager. It's my goal to help you if you're just starting out or maybe you're trying to grow in your career. This is the exact video that I wish I had when I was starting out. Now, as we go through this video, what is the one thing that you wish you knew before you started your current job that could have even made you even more successful? Let me know and leave me a comment down below. Let's build a community here. Let's engage and let's learn together. So my first lesson is to understand the expectations in the project manager role that you're applying to. There are literally hundreds of project management roles available in the field, if not thousands. Unfortunately, that means that the level of responsibility, what you're actually being held accountable for, and the expectations that are placed on you will significantly change and be different depending on the organization and the industry that you're applying to. When you look at different job forums, you're going to see so many opportunities out there. Just let me name a few. There is a project specialist, there's a project coordinator, there is a junior project manager, there's an engineering project lead, an agile project manager, a scrum master, and even a technical program manager. Each role will have different expectations across companies and the organization's maturity in their project management methodologies that could be agile, predictive, or hybrid that will be completely dependent on the company itself. Some will still be in its infancy deploying agile while others will be well evolved and well versed and fully mature, meaning that everyone in the company, and I mean everyone is on board with using Jira, deploying Agile, and using iterations to develop and deploy the product to your customer. So again, it's very important to understand here, for the company that you're applying to, what project management methodology do they use and what level of maturity are they currently at? Will it be your responsibility to transform the entire PMO since they just started using Agile? Or will you be the very first project manager in the company and then now you have to go define what your responsibilities and what your role is with your director, your manager, and your leadership team? Some roles will be much more heavily focused on leading predictive projects. And on the flip side, some roles will be specifically focused on Agile. For example, some companies will have job postings for an Agile project manager role. But when you take a closer look at that job posting, what you'll see is that it's actually a mixture of a project manager role and a scrum master role. Or it could be a hybrid of project manager, scrum master, and a product owner role, which in of itself is actually a very complex role here. So as a disclaimer, be very careful here. Now here's the advice that I give to my younger self who was applying for roles back in the day. When you apply to these jobs, read through every single line of that job description. I encourage you to understand what each line item means because when you're in the job interview and they're asking you questions, it's going to be up to you to clarify what those expectations are for your role in order to be successful. During your conversations with the hiring manager, ask clarifying questions so you understand how mature and how evolved is project management inside that organization. What are the responsibilities that you will be held accountable to? You don't want to be blindsided after you receive the job offer and the amount of work is actually much more than what you signed up for. So if you're already in your role or maybe you're just starting out, then all it takes is have an honest conversation with your manager and ask, hey John, I like to make sure that I'm meeting your expectations and that I'm set up for success. What are the expectations that you have for my role as a project manager? 
tweak and massage these words so you'll better understand the guardrails to be successful in your job. Before we move on to the next tip, make sure to smash that like button to show me your support because it truly does inspire and motivate me to keep creating high quality videos just like this. So my second lesson is that there will be grunt work as a project manager. Just because you have a title as an engineering project manager or a program manager does not mean that everything will be all glamour and glitz. Yes, it's going to feel glamorous when you first accept the offer, you see that really nice salary, and you finally see your name next to that job title. But there's going to be a lot of grunt work involved. Ever heard the saying that 90% of the job of a project manager is communication? Well, I mean, it's literally true. You're going to be in a lot of discussions. From my own experience working as a project manager, this means that you need to take charge of your teams. And as a result, you'll be spending a large chunk of your time leading your teams in those discussions. A lot of this work will involve guiding your team to make key discussions or key decisions so that the project can move forward. And I know that communication doesn't sound sexy and it sounds like it's really Really an easy skill, but it's actually one of the very most important skills that you need to master to be successful as a project manager. You need to speak the industry lingo, the technical lingo in your niche, and also be well versed from the project management side. And honestly, I do get this question all the time, but yes, you will spend a lot of your time using Microsoft Project, Excel, and or Jira reviewing project plans, schedules, and understanding what are the key milestones that need to be hit in the next two weeks or by the end of the quarter if your project is tied to a higher level program initiative. As I've said before, there will be grunt work with creating and reviewing project schedules, asking for updates from your team, and adding on to that, making sure that your schedule is clean with all predecessors and dependencies linked correctly, and just, just overall making sure that your sprints are set up correctly in Jira with the correct tickets. And I get it, I know, it may not sound as sexy and glamorous as say programming, like the latest software app, but the impact that you're going to have with leading the team and driving results, that's going to have a huge impact on the company. That's something that's truly worth being a part of. And to this day, I still love being able to lead teams and creating the strategic vision and seeing the impact that I'm having on our bottom line. The next thing I wish I knew before I started working as a project manager is that the job search is hard. What caught me by surprise is that landing your final job offer can be very difficult. This is especially true if you don't have connections in your field, the industry that you want to go into, and if you don't have the correct experience that the company is looking for. I say this not to scare you, but to share with you the reality. Just because you apply to a job does not mean that you're going to get it. It will take you anywhere from one month to even several months to land that job offer. Don't expect that you're gonna hear back from a recruiter or the hiring manager within the first week of you submitting your resume. It's just not realistic. Just because you have your CAPM, your PMP, or Scrum Master certifications does not mean that you're going to automatically have tons of interviews lined up for you. Lower your expectations so you don't get hurt during the process. To maximize your chances of success, I encourage you to focus and tailor your job search so you only apply to the roles that you best qualify for based on your experience, your background, and your internal network. Now, something that I did forget to mention, which I do want to point out, is that job titles and qualifications, they do not necessarily 100% match from company to company. And it can make your life very difficult during the job search. Depending on the companies that you're applying to, some, especially if they're a lot smaller in scale like a startup company, will require you to know a lot more knowledge because you're going to be expected to wear multiple hats, not just the hat of the project manager, which means that you'll be doing not just the actual physical work of designing software development and testing to make the product successful, but you'll also be expected to lead the team and carry it from cradle 
to grave. When I did my job search for a project manager role, I was working as an engineer. I had to do a lot of research on my own to figure out the definition of the project manager role for what I would like to apply to. I had to broaden my horizon. I literally had to talk to other people to understand what does a project manager do at different companies and what does the definition of success and the day-to-day -day look like for those kinds of roles. Now, the fourth thing that I wish I knew before getting into a project manager role is that some organizations do not have fully dedicated project management positions. Some project management roles might be fairly new for some companies. If you're entering into a really large Fortune 100 or Fortune 50 companies, or even a FANG tech company, it's likely that there will be very mature PMOs where the entire governance and structure for project management will be well-defined and established. However, if you're entering into a much smaller organization, there will be a handful of people who may not understand fully what your role is and what your full responsibilities are. And with that, it means that you're going to be put on a project where you have to clearly delineate and establish what your roles and responsibilities are with your management team and to set expectations with the peers with whom you're working with. If the team expects you to do the design work and all testing activities, in addition to being the project manager role itself, then make sure that that's actually what you signed up for. Otherwise, that work could be outside the scope of your job description. What it really comes down to is meet with your manager and establish and align on the clear definition of your role as a project manager. Establish the guardrails for success and what your plan is for the projects that you'll be leading for the next year. You might even have to educate the people around you with what your skill sets are so they don't expect you to do things that aren't technically a part of your position. Now, as we move on to the next tip, don't forget to smash that like button. Now, the next thing I wish I knew before taking my first role as an engineering project manager is that what differentiates a good project manager from a really great project manager is communication. And I can't overemphasize this enough. Communication is very, 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 very important. You will work with a lot of technical and non-technical oriented people who need to understand the details and the bigger picture of the projects that you're leading. This means that you must be very good at explaining the work in everyday, simple, easy to understand words and still be able to tie it to business objectives so you get their buy-in for the project and that you can also share what the bigger vision and the goals are. So make sure that you work on your communication. If this is an area of your weakness, I encourage you to work on it. If there's technical details on a product or a project that you're working on, spend a little bit more time learning more about the technical side. So that way you can better communicate to your higher ups as well as to those in your peers. And by doing that, you're going to be much more well perceived and positioned as a leader and someone whom others can rely on. And when you build that reputation and that trust, you're gonna be one step closer to earning that recognition, that praise and qualifying for the next job promotion. Now, these were some of my biggest learnings from becoming an engineering project manager. I'd love to hear from you. What were some of your biggest takeaways and inspiration when you entered into your current job and what would you do differently? Leave me a comment down below and let's engage with each other so we can build a community and share our experiences. Now, in the spirit of continuously improving ourselves, please watch this video next to learn the top tips I learned to become a more effective persuader and communicator. And I'll see you in the next video.